To summarize the reactions occurred in the last video and to keep it short, some people had relevant points or civilized ways to express their opinions, where some felt the need to insult me personally or to accuse me as being a watch snob. And I wanted to say that it's fine, I mean, I was aware that I'm exposing my thoughts publicly, also I understand very well how human nature works. Now, the content provided by Brave Beaters is posted on the entertainment section on a social media platform, where everyone has the freedom to express a point or to deliver a message. Equally, the viewers have the freedom to react to these subjects. However, as I see it, there is no need to put that amount of energy or put values in front of a pamphlet video. That is why YouTube removed the dislike display, to discourage those people that have strong opinions to cannibalize content creators' videos. And speaking of dislikes, some were curious to see how many people dislike this video, so here we go. 326 liked this video where 81 decided to dislike it. And if you'll ask me, it is pretty good. Because 80% of the viewers found the content more useful than offensive. Anyway, I wanted to close out the idea with the following. I am personally not interested to judge people's decisions when it comes to buying habits. However, as a channel mission, Brave Beaters will always have the same voice with the purpose to educate, to promote quality, fairness and fundamental values for those who seek for guidance and healthy principles. That is why I've made the Brave Beaters concept. But to get back on the main topic, a lot of people recommended me to look at San Martin as they offer good quality for the price asked, according to the viewership. So, sub bro, I need your San Martin for review. <laughs> San Martin is some sort of a brand that is holding strong for quite a few years already. They kind of position themselves as creating replicas for unobtainable watches starting with the Seiko 62 Mass, then the Willard, Tudor Black Bay, Rolex Submariner and the list goes on. Across time they've extended their portfolio of homages and materials, making also available the depersonalization of watches by changing the logo, the dial or the bezel color. However, surprisingly, the lack of originality of these collections are compensated by the quality applied on these pieces. So according to a lot of recommendations to look at the San Martin, today we are looking at the SN019G, which is a replica of a Rolex Submariner, the version with maxilugs. And for this reason, I gathered three monochrome divers at different price points, just to see how a San Martin is positioned from the quality versus cost perspective. So we are looking at the San Martin Submariner like SN019.G, the Edox Skydiver 70s and the Rolex Submariner Note 8. These three watches have automatic movements, ceramic bezels, sapphire crystals and a strong emphasis towards the third one which is the Rolex Sub. And starting with the neutral one. At the first glance, the Edox Skydiver is pretty different compared to the other two, because this one pays homage to a Skydiver from the 70s, a mysterious diver watch which was heavily inspired from the Rolex Submariner from the 70s. So I bought this watch because I was impressed by the watch profile of it. Feels like an actual diver because of the ceramic bezel insert and the sapphire crystal. But the thinness of the case, also the thin president bracelet, makes it very exotic and comfortable to wear. Also because it was discontinued, it was pretty much a no-brainer purchase. And compared to the subs, the Skydiver is a vintage inspired 300 meter diver with a flat appearance and printed numerals. From the side the case has curved lugs and a bevel between the brushed top facet and the polished side. The bracelet is very cool, it is thin, has three links with the centered one polished, which reminds us of the president bracelet. It is extremely comfortable and has a simple clasp. As a downside, my only complaint here is the wide open dial, which is unnatural for a vintage inspired diver. But moving to the Rolex Submariner with Maxi Lugs, the Rolex Submariner with the series 114060 was discontinued in 2020. And this is basically the model that inspired the reviewed San Martin Diver. As pros, I like the Submariner for two main reasons. The 20mm lug width, also the taper of the bracelet which is lowered to 16mm, having the clasp thinner and a bit shorter. But moving to the case, unlike the Skydiver, this sub has modernized shape and angles being full of sharp facets. And speaking of angles and sharp facets, as I introduced this San Martin, this is an interpretation of the Maxilux Rolex with date, sitting somewhere between a homage and a replica. 
And just to clarify what's the difference between them based on my scale, well a homage is inspired from an original model to a specific percentage, like this skydiver or a Steinhardt, where the replica I define it as being a product that copies the exact size, angles, proportions and design elements to a percentage up to 95%. And that is why I was reminding that Steinhardt offers, besides quality control, a homage watch on a smaller percentage than a replica, having a different case shape, good finishing and a Swiss movement which should have been priced way higher because of the caliber cost. But luckily this San Martin copied the proportions and the case angles of the sub, but finished very good. From the front the case shape looks pretty much the same, but from the side the thickness of the San Martin is taller due to the height of the bezel. The case is very well finished, we have the same brushed polish play, but the angles are a bit sharper compared to the Submariner. The ceramic bezel insert sits higher than the sapphire crystal, you'll feel the sharp bezel insert if you go with the finger through it. The bezel rotation surprisingly feels good and accurate, has 120 clicks and it aligns properly. And as specifications, if we follow the AliExpress description, it should sound like this. San Martin 40.5mm Water Ghost V3 Subdiver Luxury Man Watch NH35 Automatic Mechanical Business Wristwatch Sapphire 20 Bar Lumped. So to translate what they said, the diver is at the third generation, measures 40mm in diameter, 48mm lug to lug, 20mm between the lugs and 13mm in height, has an automatic movement which is that NH35 also loomed. However, on the loom department, these three divers offer a good amount of applied loom, for good reasons. San Martin is known for adding sufficient C3 or BGW9 on their watches, however in this case this diver has a loom pip made from a different material, the loom tone being cold blue instead of the warm blue tone of BGW9. Now in details the dial composition feels a bit dull, we have a highly polished chapter ring which in my opinion makes the overall look unbalanced, as being too obvious or too shiny compared to the rest of the materials, now the bold aerial font of the automatic 200 meters doesn't help either. But on the macro level, the San Martin surprisingly looks very well, and it feels like the brand provides quality control to their pieces. The hands are okay, also the minute indexes seem to have the metallic rings loom dots centered and even. The logo seem to be very well engraved and clean, also the engravings on the ceramic bezel insert as well. Everything seemed to be pretty sharp and painted accordingly. Now the bracelet has the same proportions from 20mm to 16mm, it's wider, has as well a safety class but has extra 6 micro adjustment points. Now to conclude, looking at the price of this Submariner, it offers indeed a clean dial, a sapphire crystal, a ceramic bezel and good finishing across the case, offering a solid watch for the price paid. It is true it is more expensive than the average of replicas offered on AliExpress, but the cost seem to be justified, due to the quality control and the materials used. You basically can pay $250 or $300 plus taxes for a watch that can be worn and enjoyed while doing some practical work, which is legit. And as value retention, the good part is that these watches can be purchased at almost half of the price on the pre-owned market. The reviewed one was for example acquired for half of the retail price. Now personally for the price asked, I would prefer to buy maybe a Glycine Combat Sub or save to buy the Edox Skydiver than the San Martin. Because I consider both the Glycine and the Edox as solid pieces to create a collection. But a San Martin purchase I see it just to satisfy the curiosity but eventually to sell it for something else. But yes, that's just me. So that's pretty much it for today, apologies for not being so active lately, but I changed my job recently which came up with new responsibilities, also I have been working on my microband concept, I basically started to present the concept and I'm collecting feedback now. I will also share it with you as soon as I have a clear design to present. So thank you very much, thanks for watching and until next time, be brave but stay safe.